Estate planning for entertainment clients. That's the subject of today's ACTEC Trust and Estate Talk. Welcome to ACTEC Trust and Estate Talk from the American College of Trust and Estate Council, a professional society of peer elected trust and estate lawyers in the United States and around the globe. This series offers professionals best practice advice, insights, and commentary on subjects that affect our profession and clients. And now, our ACTEC fellow host with today's topic. This is Travis Hayes, ACTEC fellow from Naples, Florida. Today we will be discussing issues relating to entertainment clients such as name and likeness rights and house trusts. To give us more information on this topic, you will be hearing today from ACTEC fellow Chung Che of Los Angeles, California. Welcome Chung. Thank you. In talking about estate planning for entertainment clients, obviously they're like any other clients in the regular needs that they have. But one thing that uh, entertainment clients are unique uh, in terms of their planning relates to the assets or uh, the rights that they have. Um, you know, these can extend from you know having loan out companies or dealing with royalties and residuals. It could be dealing with copyrights and. Um, and other uh, you know, musical rights. Uh, but uh, today I'd like to focus on two sort of, uh, I don't want to say narrow topics, but uh, two topics. One is name and likeness, and if I have time, then I'll touch uh, upon uh, house trust in a little bit. In, 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 with regard to name and likeness, uh, I think you have to sort of look at today's uh, uh, picture in terms of what today's society is like, uh, especially with social media. And social media, what I mean by that is uh, whether it's Instagram, Snapchat, uh, Twitter, and um, as my teenage kids like to say, Facebook for older people. Uh, the social media becomes important because of the number of followers that people have on social media. And this can impact uh, entertainment clients, whether it be even established actors such as Brad Pitt. Uh, when, when production companies or casting agents are looking at that, they understand that a, a large following could present itself with uh, an access to all of these uh, people in terms of Pro, in terms of promoting the uh, picture or you know giving uh, giving some snapshots of of, uh, of what's to come and so that becomes important for lesser talents it may be important uh, to decide which uh, which actor or actress will be chosen uh, the one with uh, obviously more followers will likely to be chosen for the same role this becomes important in terms of how you advise these clients in terms of who has access to the social media and it becomes even more important if the celebrity or the uh, client becomes incapacitated and so you want to built into your documents uh, the ability to have the successor fiduciaries to be able to not only have access but to be able to exploit uh, the social media and other name and likeness rights. It may also be important at death if you're trying to access things like photos on Instagram or Facebook or anything like that. Another reason why social media has become important in terms of entertainment clients is the monetization of these followers. For example, there was a study done by basketball or done uh, on basketball players in terms of their followers. LeBron James apparently has over 23 million followers, and there was a company that did the valuation of what his tweet. If he were to tweet something to promote one of his products, maybe it's uh, you know saying that you know I, I just opened up a bottle of uh, Sprite this morning. They calculated that to be worth one hundred and thirty nine thousand four hundred seventy four dollars. I'm not sure how they did that, but it shows you the value of social media and how this can impact the uh, entertainment client. Another example would be Kylie Jenner. Uh, who's built a billion dollar company uh, with a little, a little overhead in part because she launches all of her products through her 175 million followers. And uh, so let's dive into the name and likeness and how this uh, can impact the planning with respect to these entertainment clients. There's 30 states that recognize, currently recognize the right of publicity either by statute or by common law. There's fewer states that recognize this, this right that survives death. It could be, I think, somewhere between 20 or a little more than 20 states that recognize the post-death right of publicity. 
California obviously happens to be one of them. Uh, in California, there's a civil code section 3341.1, which allows celebrities, uh, beneficiaries, or heirs to control the exploitation of the deceased le- celebrity's name and likeness for things such as product endorsement or using the name and likeness on posters and T-shirts and possibly licensing rights, um, for instance, if they had an appearance on a show. And it allows them, it used to be 50 years uh, to control the name and likeness rights, now it's uh, extended to 70 years. These rights might not extend to unauthorized biography or other some other tribute show. In other words, it has to be some sort of exploitation for uh, monetary means. Rights may only extend to celebrities who reside, at least as far as the California law is concerned, to celebrities who actually reside in California, or it could be for another state with a similar sort of law. Some states, like Washington, may apply the law if the rights are exploited there. We'll see how far that goes. For California celebrities who were residing in California, once they pass away, you would uh, have the successor uh, fiduciaries register the rights with the California Secretary of State. It's a nominal $10 filing fee, but uh, that's vitally important. As far as planning, in terms of what to do, you can certainly provide that the rights you know, to the name and likeness rights will extend to a trust. If you don't have a you know that type of provision, then it'll you know pass to the residuary beneficiaries or heirs if the uh, uh, deceased celebrity uh, died intestate. One of the things you know, and and we do certain things when it comes to authors or you know, artists uh, or, or musicians where we may create a specific trust to hold those rights so that those, you know, whether it's the literary works or artwork or other things can be exploited by certain individuals who know how to best exploit those rights. One thing that you have to watch out and where the IRS is more cognizant is in terms of valuation of these name and likeness rights. Um, you know, I think it's a slippery slope what the IRS is doing because uh, you know, it's not a matter of just looking at the figures and saying, you know, this is the income stream that was uh, provided during the celebrity's lifetime in terms of how they exploited their name and likeness. The IRS might just say, you know, just because someone's famous, they automatically have value in terms of their name and likeness, even if they never monetized their name and likeness rights or exploited them. Uh, And this becomes a slippery slope also because the IRS contends that even if they saw certain figures, they might say, well, these figures are sort of low because you didn't either exploit them in the right way or you chose not to exploit them, which becomes a difficult matter because how do you value, you know, the potential of um, exploiting the name and likeness. And so one of the things that we've done in terms of talking to clients about is perhaps leaving the name and likeness rights to a surviving spouse with the idea that uh, once the surviving spouse passes away, maybe there's, you know, there's certainly a idea as to what that income stream might look like, but also perhaps, you know, the name and likeness rights will have uh, gone down in value at that time. So it becomes a less, uh, uh, less of a tax issue upon the surviving spouse death, or you just give it to a private foundation or some charity, uh, and that can also take care of that. Let me just touch briefly, because I know I'm running out of time, on the house trust. Where that becomes important for celebrities is uh, for privacy reasons. Uh, and it's not a, a BN and all mechanism in terms of that just because you have a house trust. And what a house trust means is that you would basically take title uh, to your house in the name of the trust, and you would have a trustee that is obviously not the celebrity. It could be a business manager, it could be an entertainment attorney, it could be somebody else, it could be a you know, brother-in-law with a different last name. And so uh, that person will hold legal title where that's the name that's shown on the deed. And if somebody were to Google the, you know, um, the celebrity's address, uh, then that person's name may show up rather than the celebrity. But you know, we do uh, warn the clients that uh, you know that's not 
that's not going to take care of the situation in all circumstances. You know, if you have a FedEx package that's uh, delivered uh, using the celebrity's name, or if you have a limo driver that comes, then that's obviously going to, uh, you know, uh, sort of undermine the privacy issues. Um, there's other issues related to the house trust where, you know, if you have mortgage, sometimes, uh, you know, the lender will want the celebrity's name on uh, in terms of uh, as a uh, co-trustee. You know, those things I can deal with uh, or I can talk about it at a different time. But that just gives you a snapshot of some of the uh, issues that are related to when you're planning for entertainment clients and how you can address some of these issues. So thank you for having me today. Thank you, Chung, for educating us on the different estate planning issues for entertainment clients. Thank you for listening to this episode of AgTech Trust and Estate Talk, the podcast series about wealth planning matters from the American College of Trust and Estate Council. To find an AgTech lawyer near you, visit ACTEC.org. Please subscribe to this series and leave us a rating or a review. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at AgTech Talk.